Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast, where we take you inside our gym, CrossFit Palm Beach, each week. It's here that we are creating new superhumans every day, transforming people's lives, helping them reach a level of health they never knew possible. We strive to answer your most burning questions on fitness, health, nutrition, training, motivation, mindset, lifestyle, and more. If you have a question, please email us at info at CrossFitPalmBeach.com. You can also learn more on our blog, livingsuperhuman.com. And if you have a moment, we'd love a review from you on iTunes. All right, it's time. Let's stop being average and start living superhuman. Hey guys, welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew Frezza, and I'm joined today by Tony Frezza and Amanda Jackson. And today we're going to meet Coach Amanda. This episode is all about meeting Coach Amanda. So uh, we'll start with the simple stuff, the simple questions. Where were you born and raised? Um, Are you married? Anything like that? Give us kind of the basics. How old are you? Stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm from Prescott, Arizona. So a little small town up north. Um, I'm 31, about to be 32, and I'm single. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nice. And no you were kids. born in Prescott, Arizona? Yeah. Well, I was born in Phoenix, moved to Prescott when I was like two. So don't know the difference. So that's what you consider your hometown now is yeah. Prescott? Cool. Exactly. And I know you've moved around recently a lot. Like, where are some of the places that you've kind of been taken uh, before you made it to Jupiter? Yeah. Um, I lived in Houston for five years. I lived in Boston for six months. Um, I guess those are the two big ones. I lived mm-hmm. in Phoenix and Scottsdale and Tempe and everywhere around Arizona and then moved out to Houston and moved to Boston and back to Houston and now I'm here. So it's pretty cool. Cool. Um, So let's talk about your kind of growing up and your fitness background. Were you into sports? Did you play a lot of sports growing up? I did. I was super competitive. I played volleyball, basketball, tennis, soccer, softball, you name it. I did it. I was always challenging my brother to everything. We'd go in the yard and it'd be like, all right, I'm going to race you to that fence. And so that kept me on my toes a lot. Did you have a favorite sport? Um, football was always my favorite sport. My dad wouldn't let me play. He said I was too fragile. But um, I did get asked to play when I was in junior high. I had a coach come up to me and ask if I'd want to be the quarterback and ask my dad. And he, that's when he said no. Um, but that was probably my favorite favorite. And then volleyball was a really, really big one. Cool. And how many uh, siblings did you have? I have five, so I'm one of five, I should say, so I have four siblings. I have a younger brother, I have an older sister, um, an older brother, and then another older sister. It's pretty cool. Nice. Awesome. So tell us how you found CrossFit and that whole discovery process. Yeah, um, I played tennis in college and was really, really bored after and was a personal trainer at 24 Hour Fitness and didn't like it at all. Um, And then saw a friend who lost a bunch of weight and just asked her how she did it. And she said it was this thing called CrossFit. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Um, Found a Groupon and went and tried it out. And they basically were like, "Mm, yeah, you can't squat. So you're just going to go over on the wall and do all this mobility stuff. (laughs) And that was like my first introduction to it. And I was like, well, this is really weird. And then I found another gym and tried that out and actually ended up loving it. My first workout was like a deadlift running workout. And I was like, all right, cool. I've been running half marathons. I can do this. And then I just got addicted. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. We still tell you you can't squat sometimes. I know. (laughs) That's why it's funny. I wish I had. I probably do have pictures from like when I really first couldn't squat at all. Like I couldn't even come close. It was like an eighth of a squat. (laughs) So it's pretty fun. And where were you when you found it? I was in Phoenix. In Phoenix? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And how did that evolution happen to like eventually coaching? I was, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think of how it all, how it all laid out. Um, I was coaching volleyball and just loved it. Started coaching as soon as I got done with college and um, I think I just had a coaching brain and didn't really know it. And I was in class one day, we had a lady named Sharon, who's like the sweetest lady I've ever met in my life, Um, older lady and she was, she was moving good but she didn't really understand what was happening so I stopped in the middle of my workout to help her. And she kind of just stopped me at the end of class and was like, you know, why don't you coach this? 
I just, that's when I first thought about it. I hadn't thought about it before that. And you were already coaching volleyball at the time? Yeah, I was already probably three, four years into coaching volleyball. And where did, where did that start? Like, how did that get started? Um, I played tennis in college, like I said, um, and I really just missed the team aspect of volleyball. So as soon as I was getting done with college, I was like, I'm gonna go try and coach volleyball. I miss it. And got, got a JV coaching job, like right out the door, and then just led on from there. I coached for 10 years. Wow. Um, what was your favorite age group with the volleyball? <sighs> Junior high and high school. It was a, it was a toss up. I love the eighth graders. Uh, because they're trying to get ready for high school, so they're very much like, I want to learn, I want to do this, I got this. Um, and so that was always my favorite. The high school is fun because it's so much more competitive, and you can teach them a lot of other aspects of the game. So it kind of was a toss-up. It depended on the year, and it depended on the kids. But Do you think that's made you a good CrossFit coach? I think it taught me a lot of patience, um, so I would definitely <laughs> say yes. People always ask me the biggest difference between kids and adults, and there really isn't one. Um, we're, they're basically the same thing, so it's great. <laughs> Especially here at CrossFit Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> For all a bunch of kids. Right. <laughs> nice. And then uh, tell us a little about your journey. I know you have some interesting stories along the way of like going to Boston. You were actually working at Harvard mm -hmm. and uh, I think a little bit homeless at the time and then <laughs> going to Houston. And um, why did the journey take you to these other places? So I learned that there was this thing called strength and conditioning um, where I could work with athletes and that was a really, really big deal to me. Um, it was something I really wanted to get involved in because it wasn't really something that I had when I was in college. So I looked into it, was applying for jobs, whatever. Then I found an internship at Harvard and applied for that, got the internship and was like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy, I get to go to Harvard. Spent six months there doing an internship with um, the athletes in the fall, which was probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, started off really good. You don't get paid at all in those internships. So um, the gym that I was at coaching CrossFit raised money to send me there, which was really, really cool. Um, but I got there and obviously after like four months or so, I was really running tight on money and ended up the roommate that I had, I tried, to, I tried to bring my dog the first time and she said no. And then the person who was watching my dog couldn't watch my dog anymore. So I kind of snuck my dog on the plane. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, no, I, I snuck my dog on the plane, got there, and she heard him cry and got really mad and just said, hey, like, I don't like dogs, sorry. Um, so it ended up that I lived in the gym for like the last month that I was there. I lived. Um, at CrossFit Fenway in the office. I slept in the office and no one really knew I was there except for the coaches. So that was pretty, it's pretty entertaining. Um, it taught me a lot, it taught me a lot. Cool, so. and, and then you transitioned to Houston from there? Yeah, so once my internship was over, I had job offers but was tr like, just struggling to find somewhere to live that would take a dog. And I'd had my dog for 10 years, so I was not gonna just be like, well, see you later. So I was like, all right, there's gotta be a reason that this isn't lining up, it's not working out. Um, went back to Houston and basically started like a strength and conditioning program for a volleyball club there and kind of went that route for a couple years. And I don't know, I just kept telling myself that there was a reason I was back in Houston, so. Awesome, and when you started coaching CrossFit, was that was that immediate or like what went, how did it change to want to do that full time? So I got my L1, I didn't tell anybody. And I went and studied and did all these things, took my L1, passed in May. And then the gym that I was at at the time, I don't think they even needed a coach or really needed anybody. Um, so I kind of just kept working out. Word got out that I had gotten my L1 and there was a gym closer to where I worked that was looking for a coach. And so they're like, hey, we'll kind of like onboard you. Like, you know, you can come shadow a 5 a.m. class because if you can make it here at 5 a.m., then you'll be mm -hmm. golden. I'm like, all right, it's a 30 minute drive. So I'm like, cool, I can do this. Day one, I intern, do whatever, shadow, it was great. Day two, when I was supposed to intern, the other coach called out sick and they're like, well, good luck. <laughs> like, you have the <laughs> class. And so I actually just kind of got thrown into it that way. Um, and then it just, it built from there. I was doing as many classes as I could. I realized how much I loved it, and then I started coaching at multiple gyms just to kind of coach more full-time, and it's just really grown. I just, 
I love doing it. It's something that I can come every single day and be like, I love where I work. This is the best. So. Cool. How, do, how does CrossFit and volleyball compare for you? Like we talked about kids oh, versus man. adults, right. but like how did those two things, do you see them as the same? Um, they're relatively the same. They're the same in the aspect of like making people believe that they can do something. Um, they're always learning, right? So the kids are always learning new things about volleyball. Clients and athletes are always learning new things about lifting. And so that's very, very, very similar. The only difference is the game time stuff, right? So volleyball game, like, hey, I've prepared you for this. Mm -hmm. Now it's your time to shine. Um, I guess you could see the open almost as that. Like, yeah. hey, I've prepared you for this. Now Dave Castro is going to kill you. <laughs> like, no, um, but it's kind of that similar um, aspect to it. I, it's helped me voice wise. Um, I tend to be pretty loud coaching, and I think that's just because I've had to yell over kids for 10 years. So I would guess that's probably the most similar point. And that's something you'd like to continue doing coaching uh, athletes, younger athletes? Yeah, I love. Um, I mean, I love the sport of volleyball in general, so that's, um, that's always been a big thing. I really want to train those younger athletes and get them prepared for high school and college so that when they go into their weight rooms, the coach is like, man, where did you come from? Like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen somebody move like this. Because um, working in my internships, in both of my internships, we'd get these freshmen that would come in and it was like, mm -hmm. I don't know who taught them. Like, this kid's never seen a weight room. Um, so just seeing kids that are so athletic and so good at their sport yet they're so unathletic in the gym, is where I really want to tie it all together. That's cool. You got the right skill set to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about your education and what you're doing oh uh, <laughs> kind of on the side now. Um, I'll just leave it at that and let you take it yes. away. All right. Um, so I am currently in a PhD program in health and human performance through Concordia Chicago. Um, I finished my master's through them and had straight A's, which is just something I randomly throw out because I still can't believe that I got straight A's the entire time. Um, but it's an online program and it's allowed me to really take what I'm doing and put it into perspective and put it on paper. Um, and it's, it's gone both ways. I'm learning stuff there that I can bring here and I'm learning stuff here that I can take to my classmates and my professors and really look at it. Um, I feel like there's a reason that I'm in the program and there's probably something research-based that I'm going to come across and I'm going to make way with and so that's kind of where I'm at with it. Do you have any, I mean besides that aspect of kind of like the unknown, I think something's going to happen, but do you have any um, like objectives that you really hope to get out of it or, or stuff that you, you see is going to help you in the future? I feel like I've always had this really big tie into um, the sudden cardiac death with athletes and just trying to find a better way to test them and be able to make sure that you know, whatever it is that's going on with their heart, we can actually figure out while they're training um, because you can't really test them while they're in action. So I know that's been a really, really big one for me just because it, it's so sad that we have these athletes that just fall over in the middle of a game and that's it and no one knew anything was wrong and they passed their physicals. And so I know something along that route is probably where I'm gonna end up going. Um, it's definitely gonna be athletic based. There's no doubt about that. Cool. Have yeah. you started to dive into that already? Not a ton. Um, there is a member here that I've talked a lot with stuff about because she did her, um, her dissertation and stuff. She did her, her doctorate. And so I'll like throw questions at her like, hey, do you know what this is? Like, what do you know about grant writing? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Because um, that's all very, very new to me. So I don't really, I have all these ideas, but I don't know how to like streamline them into a project. And what does the commitment look like on a PhD program? And like, when is that? What's the timeline for you? So I went the part-time route, which I put in quotes because it doesn't feel very part-time. Um, but they require that you put 20 hours a week towards your schoolwork. So yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty challenging. Um, I write anywhere from like three to five page papers every single week, and I have been for a year and a half just in the PhD program. Mm -hmm. um, in the master's program, it was like one to two pages a week. And then they're like, hey, here's this, here's 12 chapters you have to read and a bunch of writing. Um, but that's, I mean, I guess it came with it. And when did that start and when does that finish? So that started August of last year. So August of 2018 is when I started that program and it'll end somewhere around 2022, 2023, depending on how long it takes me to write my dissertation. Nice. Yeah. Um, 
tell us about your like athletic development through CrossFit or just not even necessarily athletically, but like what, ha what has been the benefits you've seen or the changes you've seen? Just in CrossFit in general or? Yeah, like you as an athlete, like oh, what you've done. Yeah. yeah. So I tell everybody that I wish I had CrossFit when I was younger because I was the most athletic person. I actually am still pretty athletic when it comes to sports. <laughs> I'm that person that I was just talking about. We'll Very good at sports. Dodgeball comes around. Oh, it's on. I'm so <laughs> uh, no, but I'm like, I'm super athletic. You can put me on a baseball field. You can put me on a tennis court. You can put me on a basketball court and I'm pretty much going to handle myself. And in here, it was like really, really a struggle at first. I was like, gosh, this is so hard. Like, how could I be so good at that and not good at this? And um, what I've noticed is I took two, three years off of tennis, didn't play at all, just had been crossfitting the whole time. Guy asked me to go hit with him and I was like hitting lights out, like so much more power, so much more stamina. Like we played probably 20, 30 minutes just in warm up, and he was dying. He's like, oh my gosh, I need a water break. Like, how are you not even sweating? Like, I was like, this is nothing. Like, what do you, like, I don't know, I'm fine. Um, so I think that's been the biggest development is it, transformed my whole game without me actually playing that sport. Um, it just, it made me stronger, it made me faster. You know, I was able to, to pro I could probably play better now than I did when I was in college, which is just insane. So that, is that where that passion comes from, wanting to make the connection for like a volleyball player to like, there's this missing link that you haven't seen? Yeah, I think it's just such a huge component. I've had so many volleyball athletes that come to me, they're 18 years old, and I ask them to do a box jump and they can't even properly jump. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how have you been jumping for 18 years of your life, but you don't actually know how to jump or land? Um, so just even that that aspect right there, in the last like 10 years, the, the injury rate's gone up so high in sports, and I think it's just from improper training and the fact that sport coaches are just there to sport coach. They're not there to actually train these athletes to move properly. Yeah, so it's so crazy. I mean, we see some younger, uh, younger guys and girls, but like soccer players that you ask them to do a squat and their knees are going all over the place. And you so imagine bad. them doing that at full speed on yep. a single leg while trying to, you know, and you wonder why eight, so many ACL injuries are happening mm -hmm. and things like that. It's, it's so obvious once you get them into a controlled setting in exactly. the gym. Exactly. Cool. So, uh, let's talk about some of your coaching stuff. Okay. Um, what do you what do you get the most out of coaching CrossFit now? Why is that so fulfilling? Like, I, I know when we talked and had the conversation, it was like you know I I could see myself moving away from volleyball because of how much I enjoy CrossFit. So what do you get out of coaching CrossFit? I love how much it changes the lives of people. So um, recently I had a client who came to me and she was having a bunch of health issues and she just wasn't feeling good about herself and um, she came on the 40 day challenge and. I'm not even kidding you. She texts me all the time. She's like, oh my gosh, I did this, I did that. I'm so excited to see where I'm at. And like, I feel so much better. And you know, my husband notices and those are the things that I get so excited about. Um, I, it's just very, very fulfilling when it comes to those things. I love just seeing the, like, the way people are changing, the way their mindset's changing. Now they're a more positive person. They're better at home. Um, they genuinely love life, which I think is such a huge piece. So many people have all these struggles and they don't know how to handle them. And then they come in and they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best. Like if I didn't go to the gym every day, like I just, I wouldn't know what I would do. So I think that's really like the big fulfilling piece for me is seeing those people just completely transform their life. Cool. Um, we got some more rapid fire questions oh for you. Um, okay. So what's your favorite exercise? Like CrossFit exercise? Yeah. Oh, double. I mean, I guess if you have something that we don't <laughs> I do. I was like, here. oh no, I don't know. Is there something I'm missing? Are, are you um, doing like tricep extensions yeah. in your garage? I mean, like, when are we going to do <laughs> more of these? <laughs> um, no, double unders, power cleans. Two favorite movements of all time. Nice. Yeah. Uh, least favorite? Thrusters. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Dumbbells, barbell, don't like them. <laughs> uh, favorite benchmark workout? Ooh, that's such a good one. Probably Grace, just because it's all clean and jerks. Nice. Yeah. Quick to the point. Yeah. Um, Quick do you have any there. favorite books? Ooh, um, I have quite a few that I really, really like. Um, I'm trying to think of, I really like The Hate You Give, which is a book that I read probably six months to a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, that just basically talks about the differences in cultures and how um, it's basically like 
a black family whose kids go to a predominantly white private school, but they still live in the hood. And it just talks about both sides of it. She doesn't know who she is and she doesn't know who to be and when to be mm. that person. And I, it was very eye opening for me. I was like, wow, I didn't even realize these things were actually, you know, going on. And so I really, really liked that one. It's cool. Is that like a true story or is that more? I think it's based off of a true story. Um, I know she's written another book recently that I wanted to look at. I can't even remember the name of it, but um, I love those um, or that book. And then I love basically any like positive, like, hey, let's look at life in a different light kind of style. Nice. Do you have a favorite movie? Wizard of Oz is my favorite of all time. So that's that's the untouchable one. And then I always have a favorite Disney movie too, which is Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> We didn't give you two choices. I know. I was like, hold on. But there's like two different categories in this. And my favorite princess movie is this. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, let me give you the whole list. No, I'm just um, do you have a favorite food or cheat meal? Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, anything with ice cream. Um, yeah, that's. So you have to answer the two categories of ice cream. What's your favorite place to go for ice cream? Ooh. And then what's your favorite like store bought brand of ice cream. Out here yet? I know, I there haven't. The the store bought brand for sure is Talenti black raspberry chocolate chip. It's like the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> um, and then I don't even know, like place wise, I couldn't even tell you. I mean I'm pretty much like open to try anything. I've tried I guess I tried Palm Beach ice cream. It was pretty prefer good. prefer to eat ice cream alone in the dark where no one can see me. The problem is I can eat a whole pint at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. Nice. Uh, so we'll wrap up with how did you get down here? Like, what was the journey here? I mean, we didn't really talk about that. We talked okay. about a lot of the journey. Um, what made you decide to come to CrossFit Palm Beach and settle in Jupiter? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, interestingly enough, I found the job on Instagram through barbell jobs <laughs> which i love telling people because i'm like social media does have such a good side to it and that was one of them um i sent my friend the the post that i saw and i was like dude this place looks awesome and i was like but i could like no way that's like dream job i couldn't do that and he just laughed at me and was like i don't know why you don't just apply he's like no offense you don't really have anything in houston my family doesn't live there i'm not married i don't have kids like there was nothing holding me back so i applied I went through the whole process, kept looking up stuff, kept, you know, trying to figure out like, is this the place I'd want to go? And um, when I came down for my interview, I was like, wow, this is like the coolest place ever. <laughs> like, hold on, you guys are by the beach. It's huge. There's awesome people. And um, so moving wise, this is the best part. I have like a little Mario Kart car. It's a Chevy Spark. And I only put whatever I could fit in there. And that's how I made it down here. I drove with whatever fit in my car and my dogs and we came to Jupiter. And so now I'm here. <laughs> that's awesome. And we're glad you're here. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that's all dogs. I have. You have and my dogs, yeah. You're so sweet. <laughs> Do you have anything else, Tony? No. All right. That's it. Thanks for being a part of the team, yeah. Amanda. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you, for Amanda. having me. <laughs>